Number 10, a study on the effects of headbanging. There are ridiculous recommendations for pretty much every silly thing nowadays, including headbanging. A pair of Australian scientists studied the effects of various forms of headbanging such as the angle banged at and the headbanging frequency. They also interviewed many headbangers who were probably confused as to why the scientists were even bothering to look into it. So after their extensive study, they concluded that headbanging at an angle of 75 degrees can result in mild head or neck injury. They also made a few recommendations to heavy metal fans everywhere. Firstly, not to headbang too deeply. Secondly, to only bang to slower songs and unbelievably, they also recommended wearing protective gear to heavy metal concerts. Number nine, a study examining whether or not wearing socks over shoes reduces chances of slipping on ice. A simple slip on ice can be dangerous to many older or more frail people. Go for a walk outside on a chilly day and if you're unlucky, you can end up with a broken hip. So a study looking into how your chances of slipping on ice can be reduced isn't really that crazy. But the result is kind of odd, as they suggest that pedestrians in towns with steeper hills put socks on over their shoes, which sounds like it makes sense because of the rough surface of most socks. But at the same time, it sounds strange because they are typically made of smooth fibers and don't have studs that can dig into ice. Remember how you used to slide across the floor with your socks at home? The results in the end were in favor of the socks. But the problem with wearing socks over shoes was not that they didn't reduce slippage, it was that many of the volunteers opted to return the socks in fear of being seen walking around with socks on their shoes. And the researchers figured that many other people would be against it for the same reason. Reportedly, one of the volunteers that returned the socks promptly slipped on the ice on the way out of the experiment area. Number 8. A study observing fruit bat oral sex patterns. Not too long ago, it was the thought that the only adult animals that participated in any kind of oral sex, the scientific term for oral sex being fellatio, were humans. And it didn't seem that there could be any advantage to oral sex in the wild. But a team in China set out to prove otherwise when they noticed the strange behavior of fruit bats. Due to their annoying habits of mating upside down, in the dark, in often inaccessible places, this would be one of the first studies of its kind. They managed to record bats having sex a total of 20 times, and were surprised to see that 14 out of the 20 times, the female would pull herself up to lick the male genitals, while he got on with it for around 19 seconds. The researchers weren't quite sure where the pattern comes from, but what they did see was that copulation was about 6 seconds longer if it did happen. They concluded that it could be things like increasing chances of pregnancy to use saliva to kill germs. Number 7. The Japanese accidentally bred a see-through frog. Glow-in-the-dark goldfish are actually a thing nowadays. Thanks to genetic engineering, you can pick up perfectly healthy glow-in-the-dark fish at many regular pet stores. But scientists in Japan decided that this was not enough, and set out to create glow-in-the-dark frogs. They did succeed in creating glow-in-the-dark frogs, but what happened next made little sense. Genetics are a funny thing, and when a pair of glow-in-the-dark frogs aged and reproduced, their offspring were not glow-in-the-dark like you would expect. But somehow they ended up being transparent and see-through, like some of the scary fish you can find 20,000 leagues under the sea. We think that if they were clever, they could breed them and sell them to school boards for dissection. Having see-through skin tends to take out a lot of the guesswork. Number 6. The effects of Guinness, sour cream, and garlic on leeches. Is there any situation in which you would willingly allow a leech to suck your blood? Uh, probably not. But scientists in a Norwegian university decided it would be totally worthwhile to dunk leeches in garlic, sour cream, and, of course, Guinness beer. All to see how it would affect their ability to draw blood. For science, right? Well, garlic didn't seem to help at all as the ones dabbed in garlic literally died before the experiment could continue. Guinness seemed to have the same effect on some of the leeches as it does on most people, as they fell right out of the arms of the researchers and laid around incapacitated. To the researchers' surprise, it seemed that sour cream smeared leeches sucked more blood than normal. But a later paper on the experiment says this may have been wishful thinking on the side of the researchers. But in the end, the most important thing learned by the experiment was that garlic, which is known to kill many animal species, can also kill leeches via absorption through the skin. Number 5. A study that proves rats can differentiate between Japanese and Polish, but not when it's spoken backwards. Scientists often talk about the surprising levels of intelligence found in animals with the smallest brains. 
doing things like solving complex puzzles and remembering specific locations. In this experiment, it was even shown that some animals can tell the difference between at least two different languages by teaching them to react in certain ways to different sentences in that language. The strange thing about the experiment was how limited their ability was. As long as it was the same voice speaking either language, they would react as taught. But if anyone else spoke in either language, they wouldn't react at all. But even more strangely, when a sentence in either language was spoken backwards, even by a voice they recognized, they would have no reaction. Their brains are good enough to tell the difference between languages due to their different rhythms. But at the same time, they can only tell the difference when the voice is the same. And even then, they can't use that properly to recognize a language when it's spoken backwards. Number 4. Rats, Jazz, and Cocaine Listening to the same song for 90 minutes sounds like some kind of crazy torture, no matter what kind of song is playing. Thankfully, rats are not nearly as bothered by listening to the same song over and over and over again as we are, but it gets to them eventually, and as proven by this study, they do have their preferences. They were exposed to two songs for 90 minutes each, Miles Davis' Four and Beethoven's Fur Elise. While they probably didn't like either song, they acted far more normally listening to Beethoven, which, depending on your preferences, is either good or bad taste. Personally, I like both, but the researchers wanted to see how they would act under different circumstances. So they injected them with cocaine for a week, and for some unknown reasons, they suddenly preferred listening to four. Proving jazz and cocaine go well together, I guess. Number 3. Chickens and people find the same things attractive Chickens are not known for being picky, more like pecky. It seems that they will just about peck away at anything that interests them. But according to this study, not everything interests them. And chickens have values, aesthetic values that can actually be similar to humans. Researchers took many images with the same number of males and females and mashed them all together to create several different average looking faces and placed them in front of a chicken test group. The amount of time they paid attention or pecked at each image was recorded and then compared to a human test group who were asked to pick which of the faces they liked the most. The results showed that humans and chickens picked the same image an incredible 98% of the time. So apparently chickens and humans find the same humans attractive. Hmm, good to know. Number 2. The Nazis try to prove we live on the inside of the globe. While they were busy slaughtering entire races of people, the Nazis got up to some pretty strange occult and pseudoscience stuff. Studying the roots of the Aryan race, hidden forces, and theorizing that we don't live life on the surface of Earth, but on the inside of its crust. Unlike flat earthers nowadays who just shout about conspiracy, religion, and big globe manufacturers, the Nazis were, to an extent, serious about this theory and sought to prove it. The way they would do it was simple. Take a powerful telescope and calculate where in the sky you would have to point to see London. The hope was that it would allow them to easily spy on goings on in nearby areas and track enemy military movements. If it was true that we lived on the inside surface of a hollow earth with the stars and planets on the inside, they would have been able to predict things like the D-Day landing, and probably maintain control over German controlled Europe by simply pointing their telescopes up? Eh, didn't think so. Obviously. It didn't work. Number 1. Distance traveled by the average penguin poo. Going to Antarctica to do research is a big deal. After all, traveling there is pretty damn expensive. And you have a limited time to get things done. And it's, uh, really cold. So when you go to Antarctica, it's only for big deal research, with great relevance to science right? Well, the reason for these scientists, Victor Beno and Joseph Gao, heading to Antarctica may not be what you would call relevant to science. They went to study the velocity and distance traveled by penguin poop. And the research they conducted wasn't a joke. They examined many penguins, where they pooped, how fast they pooped, drew up diagrams, figured out how much pressure they exerted to get the job done, and put it all into a three-page peer-reviewed paper. Could they have spent their time studying something else? Anything else? Mm, probably. Would the world be less crazy if they did? Uh, definitely. And who would want that? 